When editing a design, it is sometimes very helpful to be able to group elements together so you can grab all of some particular part of a design and you can grab the fills and the outlines and keep them together so that when you're moving them around, you select one thing and you select them all. I have a design pulled up. We're going to use grouping to kind of help us resequence the design so that it sews a little bit better on a cap as opposed to the left chest that it was digitized for. This design was digitized quite a while ago and it was digitized in pieces. I the, These aren't letters, they're just the pieces that make them up. You can see there's a little bit of a travel and then the first piece and then the second piece and you can see all of these pieces and if I were to grab any of these pieces, I'm not selecting the letter itself. So if I was trying to grab, let's say, all of the R, that, that's not working. Now I could click and drag a box around all those pieces to select them all. But if I wanted to just click on it and have it select the whole thing, well, that's where group comes in. And groups located right up here. If I have those elements selected and I click on group, they now have a little number one beside them. That's just the first group that I've made in this project. But now if I click on them, I will get all of those pieces. So if I move them around, I'm moving all of them together. Let me hit undo a couple times to get this back. If I want to ungroup, I can click on ungroup and it will ungroup those elements and I no longer have that number beside them. And if I click on it, I will just get the single piece. Now this design sews out from the top down and from the left to right, and I want to make it so that it can sew on a cap. So I'm going to change the sequence. I'm going to have it sew from the bottom up to push away from that bill, and I'm going to have it sew from the center out to sew away from that center seam and push any extra material towards the back of the cap where it can't do any ripply kind of harm. If I slow redraw this, I can see that it is sewing from left to right and sewing the top elements first. And then that middle line. And then the lower words. So I'm going to resequence this very quickly to go from the bottom to the top. And I'm going to do that by grabbing the color. So if I drag this up, it is now sewing high school first, and then Lawrence, and then the bar. Now one thing, when I resequenced this, my auto merge was turned off. If I had left that on, it would have squished those two together, and then I would have had to come in and select all of Lawrence to drag it down. But because I left it as separate color blocks, I can just click and drag that down. And now it's sewing high school first, and then the line, and then Lawrence. Okay, so now I want to sew from the center out. And let me turn on the origin here real quick. If I have a gap like this that's close to the center, I may choose to separate my design here so that if there is kind of some funny spacing, it appears between the words and not between individual letters. That kind of hides any weird imperfection a little bit better. So that's what I'm going to do. So I'm going to expand out my first color and I can see just kind of from looking the letters. If I wanted to, I could click and drag a box around them and group them. You could also choose to set up group as a hotkey in uh, your accelerator editor. So here I have that H, I want it to sew first. I'm going to drag it up in the list to sew first. 
And then I'm going to grab the G. I can see the G it's all one piece, but I'm going to grab the trim that goes along with it. And then I'm going to drag it up so it sews the H and then the G. And then let's grab this I and I'm going to take the trim that goes with it and drag it up. So now the things that are in the top of this list will sew first. So H, G, I, H. And then we've got that space. And then it will sew S, C. There's a little bit of the H, doesn't matter. H, O, O, and then the L. So the bottom is now sewing essentially from the center out, but any kind of weird ripple will appear between the words. I'm not expecting one, but if there were one, it would appear between the words and it would hide itself fairly well. So let's look at the bar. The bar is sewing. It is stabilizing itself. I can't really split it, so I'm good with this. And then let's deal with Lawrence. So I'm going to click and drag a box around that R. Now I could group it. Um, I'm not going to right now. I'm just going to drag it up. And then I can grab the W and the trim that goes with it. Drag it up to sew after that R. And then let's grab that A. And I'm going to drag it up to sew after that W and the trim that comes after it. And now my design is sewing from the center out and from the bottom up. So this would work well for me on a cap. It would push away from the bill. It would push away from that center seam. Now that it's resequenced for a cap and it's sewing from the bottom up and the center out, it will sew just fine still on a left chest, but it's a little bit more versatile of a design. Here I have some circles and some borders that go around them. Nothing here is grouped. If I wanted them to be distributed a little bit more evenly, I could select all those elements and I could choose to distribute or, or space them evenly. Now, when I do that, it spaced all of those elements evenly, and that may not be what I was looking for. So let me hit undo. And let me do this again. Perhaps I wanted to keep these together. If I group them, they will stay together. So now I have this group, this group, and this group. And if I select everything and I space them evenly again, it will space the groups as opposed to the individual elements. So that's another way that grouping can come into play when editing a design. Hopefully that helps with grouping and resequencing and why you might do either one.